Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February 25th, 2021 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. And we'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, my disclaimer here, due to the public health and safety concerns related to COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted remotely pursuant to the governor's executive orders, including Executive Order 202.1, which suspended certain provisions of the open meetings law. This meeting is being video recorded and being broadcast live on the town of Penfield's website, www.penfield.org, and on the town of Penfield's government access channel 1303. The meeting will also be later transcribed. Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky here. Bastion. Bastion here. Howard. here. <coughs> Tidings. Tidings here. Burton. Burton here. Sangster. Sangster here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Weissar. Weissar here. Komath. Komath here. Gray here. Okay, we have meeting minutes from February 11th. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. And maybe we can entertain a motion to approve. Tidings, a motion to approve. Can I our second? Okay. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay, Doug, would you like to run through our agenda items? All right, starting with our tabled applications. Tabled application number one, 85 Sovereign Drive, U.S. Ceiling Corps. Um, at this time, we've not received any updates, uh, so no action is required on the part of the board. So we'll move on to application number two, 1700 Baird Road, score as a subdivision. Um, since your meeting, last meeting, uh, we've been in contact with the engineers. Uh, they've responded to PRC. Um, and provided us revised plans. Uh, the revised plans uh, reflected many of the changes that were requested both by the board and by staff in our previous uh, PRC memo. Um, at this time, we have started drafting an approval resolution and um, I will leave it up to you if you guys have any other questions or concerns. We do have the uh, engineer and owner on Zoom with us. Okay. I, I have no further uh, questions or concerns. Staff is good with all the changes that we requested in the tabling resolution? Yes. Anybody else have any comments or questions? No, I'm good. No. Jim, out there in cyberspace, any anything from you? No, I'm good, AG. Okay. We, I know that we've uh, got a approval resolution uh, almost completed in draft form. It, it is and drafted. It'll need a little bit more finessing, but uh, I but it's mostly it. the boilerplate stuff that uh, that we need to put in, right? That's correct. Yeah. So with that, I mean, uh, do, Bill, you, do, do we have uh, we have the part, part two, two EAF? Yeah, we'll start with the part two. Yes, we do have a part two EAF completed. Is it premature to move to approve the no. part two EAF? No. I think we're good. And I move to approve. Do we have a second? Fighting second. Hatsky. Hatsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay, EAF is uh, approved to sign. And we probably could uh, conceivably move to approve it. Yeah, so I have all the conditions done. I'm still working on uh, incorporating the factors of consideration, but for the most part, the resolution is complete. All right, then I'll move to approve the uh, Resolution. We got a second. Tidings second. Okay, moved and seconded. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. It's approved, Mr. Scorza. You got yourself a neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Pete will be sure. in contact. 
Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Okay. Have a great night. All right. Application number three, 1838 Empire Boulevard, uh, the Chipotle uh, restaurant. Um, since our last meeting, they have responded to PRC comments and provided um, updated plans as well as updated uh, elevations and rendering. Uh, you'll now notice that the the two match, um, so they are going for the sort of darker Chipotle maroon color. Um, unfortunately, we do not have material samples. Uh, they did provide on the elevations a detailed listing of, uh, down there in the bottom right corner, uh, a detailed listing of what each of the materials were going to be and the colors um, that they're going to be. Uh, they said that the elevations do reflect um, fairly accurately uh, what the color will look like uh, on the completed building. Okay. Any comments from the board on this, on the revised submissions? My notice, uh, I don't know if I got you to thank Pete, but uh, that's VARS. Um, <laughs> looks like the rendering is, is more in line with the uh, elevations. Yes. So that's good. Any changes or comments that you have that are highlighted uh, or that you want to highlight on these revised sets? Uh, no, uh, just as, as Doug stated, I, I believe, you know, we've addressed every comment in the PRC report and, and uh, also that the board asked uh, two weeks ago. So we didn't, we didn't feel we left any issues open. Um, in, in that regard. Okay. Any staff issues that have come up since no, the staff, revised plans? Staff's came? happy with the plans. Uh, we're still going through the most recent submissions. We'll issue at least another PRC memo, but it's, it'll mostly be small technical items. Okay. Bob, you got any issues? Any comments? No. I think uh, you asked all the questions I had. So, <laughs> sorry to usurp your, uh, your questioning. No, that's there. fine. It looks it looks good. Okay, I think we got a part two. We do have a part yeah, two complete for this one as well. Prepared for that. Okay. Um, um, motion to approve pending completion based on uh, staff input. Part two of the EAF. Tighting second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Uh, EAF is uh, all set. And I believe we also have a draft approval resolution uh, that's been prepared for this. In the works. Any any uh, anybody see any reason why we can't move forward on that no. on the board? Good. So okay. a motion to approve pending completion the uh, approval resolution. Tighting second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Hetsky. Hetsky aye. Bastion. Bastion aye. Burton. Burton aye. Knauer. Knauer aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. We got a new Mexican restaurant. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. A good Thanks, night, Peter. We'll be in touch. See you guys. Yeah. All right. And then we have uh, one action item for you guys tonight. Uh, 1461, 1481 Harris Road. Um, the two properties are neighboring properties, north and south. Um, the owner at 1461 purchased 1481 is, and is intending to um, shift the lot lines to reduce the size of lot two and increase the size of lot one um, and to um, take the existing accessory structure that was previously on lot two and make it part of lot one. Um, as there, the current structure um, isn't in compliance with code on the lot as it sits. Uh, it is greater than the f greater than the size that would normally be allowed on a five acre lot um, in doing the lot shift it will bring it in to greater compliance it'll be um, smaller than is what is uh, the maximum for um, the new lot size of 7.92 7 7.29 acres 
They are currently um, working with staff to resolve the issues regarding the accessory structure that's currently on lot two. Um, a portion of it was built without a building permit. They are currently have a pending building permit with the building department. Unfortunately, until the um, lot line shift is resolved, uh, they can't go forward with the building permit uh, because it is a non-compliant structure. Um, the lot two will remain a compliant lot and uh, they're intending to sell that off. We do have the, I believe the owner and the owner's agent, um, Joe, on Zoom, if you do have any questions. <coughs> okay. Um, oh, sorry, I think Mike's trying to talk, but he's muted. Mike, were you saying something? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not talking to us. <laughs> so you're not paying attention, Mike? Is that the deal? I'm, I'm here. All right. <laughs> I'm just uh, busting your chops. Um, okay, we had discussed this, and uh, staff and all the different departments are, are good with this, the, the way it stands at the moment. Yeah, so this, this is a process, and it was, uh, so when they first approached us, we, we were not aware that, um, as you can see on the, so if you look at the map, there's the, on this lot two, um, there is the metal building, can you zoom into the metal building in lean two? There's a metal building in lean two um, that are currently on lot two. The metal building was originally built in 2000. Uh, a building permit was issued and a CFC was issued for that metal building. Uh, in a, approximately October of 2019, which is uh, newer than our newest aerial image of the that area is, um, a lean to was added that was done without a permit uh, by the previous owner of 1481. Um, in doing so, he made that structure um, larger than is allowed by code on a five acre lot, uh, by about two or 300 square feet if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, as we were going through this and I was reviewing it as an action item to bring it before you guys, uh, we did discover this lean to and the outstanding issue with it. Um, in reviewing it, when the lot line shift, if you guys move to approve it um, with the lot line shift, that the five acres will go to 7.29 acres. The maximum on the 7.29 acres is like 3,100 square feet, um, much so, so larger than what this structure is. So it would bring it into compliance size wise. Um, they do have a pending building permit um, in with the building department and the owner has stated he will do what is necessary to bring it into compliance. Um, including any of the, the inspections and getting a final CFC on it. Um, right now, the building department can't move on the building permit because as it stands on the existing five acre property as it is, um, it's, not it's, it's not in compliance and they can't issue mm -hmm. a building permit for a, uh, you know something that is not in compliance. Um, so by doing the lot line shift, it will bring it size wise into compliance, not building permit wise into compliance, but will allow the building department to issue a building permit and for the uh, structure to be brought into compliance. They have, the owner uh, has submitted uh, all the documentation he has, uh, which is uh, quite a bit on the original construction of the building as well as all, a lot of the information that the building department was looking for um, as part of what would have been the original building permit application. So the roof trusts and supports and footings and things like that. Uh, the building department will do an inspection as part of their permit process to ensure everything is compliance and anything that isn't in compliance will need to be brought um, into compliance um, as part of that. Based on their initial review, it looks like it was done properly and it, it was built um, to code. So it, uh, if you guys were to move to allow this lot line shift, um, they would file a map, the lot would become larger, the building would become compliant the building department would issue the building permit and they would just have to go through the inspection and approval process for that. Okay. <coughs> the original the option, the other okay. option would Why be would they, could get, they have Why to get a we variance we? Why would we? of where they could issue the permit and then they get subdivided and then they no longer need the variance. So it's kind of this it's a shorter route to the down. same end, yeah. yeah. So as Pete was saying, they could alternatively they could go get a variance from the zoning board. Um, at this point they would be looking at April or even May 
before they could get before the zoning board for variance that once this lot line shift is complete would be null and void because it wouldn't be necessary anymore. Okay. Pete, do you have any, I mean, based on what you know and what you've reviewed so far with this, uh, are there any major issues that you see? Or are you pretty comfortable? So I talked to the staff about this uh, earlier in the week. You know, it's not an ideal situation. It's not the ideal way to do it. But um, the one concern that you might have is that they get the approval and then they never, don't follow through with the other requirements to bring it into compliance. So, um, you know, that's why I think some of the conditions that um, I think um, Doug was talking about in the notes about, um, you know, maybe holding some funds to pay for all the approval uh, permits, the permit, the COC, and um, you know, they, they kind of keep their feet to the fire on that. Could that be done? Uh like a letter of credit or something uh so in this case what we would we, what we would ask is they would just pay for the permit and the the inspection fees up front um prior to as so initially you would just pay the permit fee permit you get your permit you'd start construction and as you do the inspections you would pay for those inspections um, as they come we would just want to front load it and make sure that they they pay all those necessary fees up front to encourage um, bringing the property into compliance um, as stated you know if they were to not ultimately um, you know the the last or you know final straw um, move would be um, we could go through code enforcement and do it through court action would be the you know if they if they chose not to bring it into compliance um, we would we so would ultimately go through court action You'd also want to condition it, I'm saying, you know, getting the building permit. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. So that would, those would certainly be conditions then, as part of any approval letter we send out. And that could become a code enforcement matter, too, if they don't comply. Okay. All right. Any, uh, you know, I think that we should, you know, table it, if nothing else. Let If we table it, it'll go to zoning, and then it's up to them, right? If they want to give the variance or not. I don't think we should really approve it or, uh, right now the way it stands, as far as I can see. I mean, they went ahead and did it, so. Well, so it wasn't this owner that brought it into noncompliance. It was the previous owner he purchased the property from. So this so guy he, buys a, the property not knowing that the barn is not in compliance. Okay. And now he wants to sell that property right but he wants to keep the barn so with his property it would be in compliance it wouldn't need a variance if we grant the subdivision wouldn't need a variance um and the question is do we you know he'd be asking for a variance for the property as it's currently configured and then get the permit and then asking for the subdivision to parcel it off and have the barn be part of the larger lot and then you wouldn't need the variance anymore um, because the lot would be large enough for the structure. So theoretically doing the lot line shift helps bring it into greater compliance. Yeah. I mean, you'd and ultimately still, the permit issue is something he would have to do regardless. Either either way you'd um, have to do the permit and inspection. Yeah. Other way is to do the permit or inspection and because we do know of it now, um, you know, regardless of any future outcome of your board or the zoning board, it it could become ultimately a code enforcement issue. Um, so if you were to deny it and the structure was not remedied. Uh, ultimately it would become a code enforcement issue um, so this this does bring it into greater compliance uh, because you, once a lot line shift is done you know size wise it does comply with our code uh, it's one our code is 192 square feet or 1% of the the lot size at 7.92 acres they're allowed 3100 square feet you know plus or minus it gets 3134 square feet um, the building with the lean-to is, I believe, just under 2,600 square feet. Um, so, you know, on as an eight, you know, just about seven and point three acre lot, it's it would be well under what he would be allowed to build. Um, 
How's enforcement go? Excuse me. How's enforcement go after him if he's not the one that built it? And we went ahead. And he does it. own the property. He is the property he owns owner it now, but he didn't. He didn't build the structure illegally. Uh, and yeah, um, ultimately, it it does become the property owner's. Um, you know, through the transfer of property, it does become the property owner's responsibility, and we've had issues with that in the past where we have yeah. gone after things that we have discovered after 10, 15 years just because, you know, in certain situations we, we can't find things or we don't know things. Um, you know, we do our best to ensure everything is compliant across town, but... You know. Right. <coughs> I don't know why we'd put ourselves in that position myself, but... In what position? The... To, you know, push it off either on uh, code enforcement or push by pushing into the court, you know, when it's, it's not, you know, it's not compliant. I mean, like, I, well, I don't those know two we, things would be the last resort. You know, that would be if we do it and he continues yeah. or he does not want well, to follow up. But he's uh, to this point, at least uh, with staff, he has shown due diligence. So, I mean, like, like I said, you know, he, you know, he did issue, he did submit a building permit application. He did submit information to the town regarding, you know, what we would require as part of a building permit application. He has submitted all that information already to us. Um, so at least from staff side, we are we do see um, at least some initial follow through. Uh, but they can't issue the permit now is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Normally we would we would have issued the permit. <coughs> They'd be going through that process right now, but because it is currently not in compliance, for issues other th than what is related to the building permit, uh, they can't issue the building permit. Right. So the, the landowner is moving in the right direction and trying to do the right thing, bring it into compliance. Yes. But to do that, we have to approve the lot line shift. Correct. So he can get the permits. Well, there's uh, two options. Or they could go for a variance. Yeah, the, the alternative or, option is right. they could go get a variance from right. the zoning board. Um, it <clears> just delays <throat> things by several months. Okay. I mean, I would say that my opinion on this is if it was still owned by the previous owner, I would definitely want to get the variance now because they just went ahead and did something that they weren't supposed to do. But from what I understand, this guy bought the property not necessarily knowing. And uh, we well, don't know that though. You just know um, you know. Uh, you have to go for a variance for it to just be not required after the fact is uh, my opinion it's like bureaucracy run amok but I get the I get what Terry's saying um, that you know you follow the letter uh, assuming no gray areas that that's what we should do but I'm I don't know I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt with this one, but I got to bring it into compliance. Great. And we, we would have those, you know, we would put all those things in into our approval letter that would ultimately be sent to you guys as well as the applicant. And, um, you know, <clears throat> that approval letter is the same binding as our resolutions are. Bob, your your thoughts? I, yeah, I don't know if it could be done. Can you, can you bond the fees at the time if you, if you guys make it a condition of, of approving the lot line shift, because ultimately AJ's signature is on the lot line shift. Um, so anything that you guys condition as part of granting, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Pete, but you know, anything you guys, you guys condition as part of uh, granting the lot line shift is enforceable as, as if it was under one of your normal resolutions. Because I'm thinking if you did, if you bonded the fees, then it would be paid at the same time, or the bond would be there at the same time that the uh, subdivision was approved. And then, because it sounds like it's, it's with the permit and inspection process, from what you said, it's most likely going to be in compliance from a construction point of view. So it's more just a, a fee thing. No, oh, you said better compliant, but not compliant, you said, right? Well, more compliance in meaning well, that, you know, um, you know, I mean, they, they would still need a building permit. Right. You know, if building permit aside, 
um, you know, by, you know, assuming they had one, the, the structure would still be too large for the five acres. So if, assuming they had a building permit and it was already CSE'd, um, you know, doing the lot line shift would bring it to compliance because it would be a, it would be a compliant, um, it would be a compliant structure for so the, the, the size, size of the, of the structure would be compliant. Yeah. So as it is, I believe, <coughs> and I'm ballparking the numbers because I don't have them right in front of me. Uh, I believe right now on the five acres, they're limited to about 21 and change square footage, 21, like 60 or something like that square feet on a five acre lot. The building, as it currently sits, is 2,600 square feet. On a 7.29 okay. acre, I think they're, they're allowed 31 and change square feet. Um, Jim, comments? Yeah, in the first place, I, I think sending this to the zoning board is, uh, is a bad move. Um, if I'm on that zoning board, I'm going to deny their request for a variance because, number one, compliance is achievable, and number two, they hadn't exhausted their other remedies. The, the easy remedy for this is to allow them to move the interior lot line, and then they no longer need the variance. Um, and with respect to the construction, you know, guys, this isn't a, a, an industrial complex. It's a lean to. It's a, it's a simple permit, uh, a simple one or two inspections. If they find something that doesn't comply with the code in effect at the time, um, they compel the owner to make the corrections. He's willing to pay the fees up front. That, to me, this is a no-brainer. I think we grant. Okay. Um, I think we've exhausted our discussion. Everybody said their piece. Uh, somebody want to move one way or the other? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, no. Okay. Okay. So that, that passes. Uh, Joe, Four to one. still on here with us. Um, I'll follow up with you on, on what is necessary um, following um, probably tomorrow or Monday. Um, so that you guys can uh, get that process moving. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have for you guys tonight. And we also have all any right. other new or old business to bring before the nope. board? Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. And we will adjourn this uh, meeting. Okay. Have a great night. Stand adjourned. All right. All right. Thank you, Joe.